Good morning, I'm Miss Rosa. Welcome to Storytime. Let's do our welcome song. First, we're gonna do it in American Sign Language and English. So, let me tell you some of the vocabulary. Hello, for American Sign Language. Then friends. Then it's time to say. Let's do the whole thing now. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Now we're going to do it in Spanish and American Sign Language. Hola means hello. Amigos means friends. It's time is es tiempo to say a decir. Let's put the whole song together. Hola amigos, hola amigos, hola amigos, es tiempo a decir hola. Let's do some stretching exercises. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Can you do that faster? Let's try. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Caregivers, did you know that singing helps children realize that individual letters have a sound, plus with words that they have littler sounds because there's a note on each syllable. Let's sing. Alphabet song. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Now let's do the alphabet in American Sign Language. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. The letter today is the letter E. It has two sounds. It has the short E sound, E, eh, or the long E sound, E. See if you can find the letter E in some of the stories I read are some of the animals we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to celebrate Earth Day. In the United States, it was first celebrated on April 22, 1970, and it is still celebrated on April 22, but it's spread to other countries. Some places celebrate it on the first day of spring called the vernal equinox. And the Earth Day is to celebrate our earth, just what it says, and to help keep the earth clean. Today's book is If Elephants Disappeared, written and illustrated by Lily Williams. Isn't this a fun picture? The elephants are crossing the river. One, two, three. And three people are crossing through the forest. The forest is the Congo Basin Forest. It's a complex place with many different types of landscapes, plants, and animals. The animals are here are strong, slippery, loud, and big. We're talking about one main type of elephant today, the African forest elephant. Elephants are a keystone species. 
That means that they're important to the place where they live. Um, anything from walking to eating to pooping to sleeping affects where the elephants live. Did I say pooping? Yes. Um, in order to feed their big bodies, elephants walk miles and miles every day. In fact, they can walk as far as 3,000 to 6,000 miles in a year. And they eat 40 different types of plants. And when they eat a plant, what do you get when you eat plants? You get seeds. And they have thousands of thousands of seeds that go through their stomach and come out in their poop. Because of all the walking they do, they spread that poop everywhere. But first, since 2001, more than half of those African elephants have been disappeared. They have died from poaching. So if all of those elephants disappeared, So would their dung. What's dung? Well, that's the same thing as poop. And that poop is filled with thousands of seeds that they scatter all over when they walk. So there won't be any seeds if the elephants disappeared and the elephant dung disappeared. That would mean less different types of plants. That's called biodiversity. And they would decline. Less plants, if all the biodiversity or plants disappear. The trees would grow bigger and bigger and bigger and they would shade out the bottom of the forest floor even more. That would mean less plants growing underneath. See, there's a lot of plants now and less and less plants. And if you see the dirt has no plants underneath the trees. That means the soil would wash away in the rain. If it, too many plant species disappear, the forest might not be able to survive. The animals wouldn't have as much food to eat, not just the elephants, but all the other animals. Without diverse plant life, um, the forest landscape would change drastically. It could become like this desert here. This chain effect is called a trophic cascade, and it would spread across the different e ecosystems, the different environments. And it would change the world as we know it. But from dung to plants to people, all the life on Earth is intri intric intricately connected. And each organism, each living animal, plays an important part. And fortunately, today, elephants still roam free. And to help, we can use our voices to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. And maybe then everyone will see that even the biggest of us needs a little help now and again. And look for the wor new words we learned. We have a glossary. And here's a list of what we can do to help the elephants. And that is the story. Caregivers, sing out the body parts. It's a fun way for the children to increase their vocabulary. Now, we're going to sing the hokey pokey. You put your left hand in, you put your left hand out, you put your left hand in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. You put your right hand in, you put your right hand out, you put your right hand in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. You put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, you put your left foot in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. You put your right foot in, you put your right foot out, you put your right foot in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about. 
That's what it's all about. Yay! <laughs> We're going to read My Friend Earth, written by Patricia McLaughlin and illustrated by Francisca Sana. I want to show you this cover, though. See here? Sometimes she's real big, and sometimes she looks small. Let's watch, read the story and find out. Can you see her here? She's real small. Maybe. My friend Earth. Ooh, there's a surprise. My friend Earth wakes from a winter nap. She hears the busy spring sounds, the farmer's hoe, tap, tap, tapping, and the caw of crows. She sees the little, the silent seed, the spider spinning silver, the robin and the wren. She sees the large, the long-winged albatross crossing the sea, the mole tunneling the underdark. She guides the chimpanzee to her night nest. And she guides the baby zebra to find his mother in the hundreds of black and white striped mothers. See, here's one, and there's the baby. She tends the prairie where the sun-dappled wild horses run free, run, run free through the grasses that swish against their legs. And the tundra, where the reindeer graze for moss. And the glistening ice, where the young polar bear pads on mittened feet. She guards all the creatures in all the oceans. The black manta rays sleek like shadows. There they are. And the shining parrotfish. And the tiny quill that swim with millions of other krill so that they can look big. And the whale, the whales who are really big. My friend Earth pours the summer rain to fill the streams, flowing down the mountains, through the fields, to the rivers, to the sea. My friend Earth sometimes pours too much rain and flooding meadows and roads until she dries out the land. Sometimes she blows fierce autumn winds, sweeping the limbs of the trees and the shingles from the roof. until she stills the wind so that the red and orange and yellow leaves can float to the ground. When cold comes again, my friend Earth sprinkles the snow, silent whispers, covering the dens where the baby black bears ha are born in their soft darkness and drifting the snow over the icy ponds where the turtle sleeps in the mud, settling into the empty nest of the birds. Under the white, the silent seed is cradled in the dark soil watching.
waiting to fly up again in the warm, bright sun of spring. And that is the story of my friend Earth. Today we're doing the story, Polar Bear, Polar Bear, what do you hear? What do you hear, Polar Bear? Polar Bear, Polar Bear, what do you hear? I hear a leopard purring at me. Purr, purr, purr. Leopard, leopard, what do you hear? Let's find out. I hear a hippo bellowing at me. Hippo, hippo, what do you hear? Let's find out. I hear a peacock calling to me. Peacock, peacock, what do you hear? I hear a lion roaring at me. Lion, lion, what do you hear? I hear flamingo fluting at me. Flamingo, flamingo, what do you hear? I hear an elephant trumpeting at me. Elephant, elephant, what do you hear? I hear a snake hissing at me. Snake, snake, what do you hear? I hear a zebra neighing at me. Zebra, zebra, what do you hear? I hear a zookeeper bringing my food. And that is our puppet play for today. What animals do you know or that we talked about today that begin with the letter E sound? How about ah, elephant? Can you think of some more animals? I know one. What does this look like? Looks like a reindeer? No, no. This is bigger than a reindeer. It's called an elk. And he's got real big antlers. Yeah. Then what else begins with an E sound? Let's see. Can you think of a bird that flies in the air and has a white head? An eagle. Yes. What else? In the ocean. It almost looks like a snake, only it's a little bit flatter. It's got a mouth that opens. It's an electric eel. And what's another animal? Oh, I know. This, might, this is a hard one to describe. What looks a little bit like spaghetti, you see it in the ground. It likes to go under the ground. Or it looks like a tiny little snake. You know what that is? It's an earthworm. And they eat the dirt and stuff and make it nice and loose for people to use it. And those are some of my E words for today. Caregivers, did you notice how we talked about the letter E? And we did it with animals, a fun topic that kids like. That helps them remember the letters even more. I love to drink tea. It's my favorite drink, especially the peppermint flavor. So I like this song too. I'm a little teapot. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle. Here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip me over and pour me out. Let's do it again faster. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spout. Then I get all steamed up, I will shout. Just tip me over and pour 
me out. Today we're doing the song, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. I like to sing the title. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Today's craft sack. You need the letter E, which would be there some glue, and something to color with. So if you don't have a craft sack, you will need a brown paper bag, something to glue with, with your parents' help, cut out a letter E, and something to color with. Now caregivers. This is an important step for little kids. Their scribbles are the beginning of learning how to write. Listen to the toddlers when they describe what they're drawing and ask them about it. And listen and encourage them. They're learning about the letters and what they're doing. Now I'm just going to do it this way because I like to have more than one letter E, more than two even. Gosh, I like to have a lot. Let's see what color sounds fun. Let's try this. You know, do different colors, or do their one favorite color. It really doesn't matter. And just enjoy it. Have fun. And see, I'll show you how you can make another letter E without even cutting it out. Make sure you get all the scribbles all over the place. See there, you got your other letter E, and you got a colored letter. Or if you'd rather, you can make it white like that. Whatever works for you. I'm going to put my E down here. I like the colors. Or maybe I'll do, yeah, I think I'll do it that way. I'm going to get some glue to make the letter stay in place. as long as I don't glue my fingers. One on the bottom. And one. One on the top and one on the bottom. There you go. Very sticky. Now you've got your e-bag ready. And if you have a this one, you can either put it on the bag or you can leave it separate, whatever you like. And you go around your house and you find some E items. Or if, you don't, if it's not something you can put in a bag, you can write it. I'm gonna use a marker like, how about exercise, the word exercise. I'm gonna write it down. If they see mommy and daddy exercising or any of your caregivers there. Or how about year? Write it down. Then put that, tear it off and put it in the bag. See how full you can get your bag of E items. Maybe you got some elastic somewhere or an earring. We're now doing the goodbye song. This is goodbye, friends, it's time to say. Now, English and American Sign Language. Goodbye, friends. <laughs> okay. Start the song. Okay. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. The Spanish and American Sign Language. Adios, amigos, es tiempo, a decir. Now, 
I need to do it again. Okay. I didn't define it. Go ahead and do it again. Goodbye, adios. Friends, amigos, it's time, es tiempo, to say adesir. Goodbye. <laughs> oh. Adios, amigos. Adios, amigos. Adios, amigos. Es tiempo a decir adios. <laughs>